What is up guys, Fahi here from awesometudes.com and while searching for a topic that I'm going to create for this video, I stumbled upon a really nice post and I'm going to, well not read the full post, but I'm going to read the main points and I'm going to give my comments because the post, as you can see, talks about can you be a full-time solo indie developer, meaning can you make a living out of creating games, which is what all we want. You're on this channel because you want to learn how to create games, you want to make a living out on game development, and you want to, well, do that your whole life. So let's see the actual numbers. Let's see the actual statistics that this guy, Carl Contes, I'm hoping that I'm not butchering his name, has laid out in this post. And by the way, I will put a link to this post. It will be in the description below. So as you can see here, it says, can you be a full-time solo indie developer? And he introduces himself, he's Carl, so on and so forth. He creates uh, or created a research platform, video game insights, yada, yada, yada. So what he is talking about is and he's looking by the way on Steam only so he's researching the Steam app store or the game store and he is giving the numbers the download numbers the revenue numbers and let's see that so let's start by looking at Steam games lifetime gross sales and here he has this nice little chart that shows from 0% up to 99% and it goes up to 30 thousand or actually three million dollars but if you can see this graph looks at 41,000 games on Steam and racks them into percentiles by estimated sales now in this initial insights he says over 50 percent of games on Steam have never made more than five thousand dollars so over 50 percent the games you put or you see on Steam don't make more than five thousand dollars now depending on where you live especially if you live in the united states because this also depends on the place where you live in the united states the salaries need to be high because the cost of living is high and the taxes are high so with 5k you cannot even die in the united states in a third world country you can probably live nicely with five thousand dollars but again let's move forward so this is over 50 percent of games only 23% of the games have made over $50,000, an average annual salary for a full-time game developer in the United States, so only 23%. And as you can see, that doesn't sound promising as he says in the next line, but you need to know one thing. So when people talk about Steam and when people say, oh, my game reached this number on Steam, it got this many downloads on Steam, and you know how many how many games there are on Steam, you need to know that, as he points out here, the majority of the games on Steam are hobby projects. And I want to just take a moment and say a few words about this. So, as you can see, the majority of games on Steam are hobby projects. Hobby. What, just, what does that mean? That means that, I don't know, I have a full-time job. I work as an accountant somewhere, but I also love game development. That's my hobby. I watch a few tutorials on YouTube and yada, 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 and I learn how to create games, and I create small games, and I put them on Steam. That's a hobby project, but not only that. I want to point out that there are a lot of copy-paste games on Steam. There are a lot of asset flip games on Steam. And I even have one, when I say I have one, I have a guy that copied one of my tutorials, the one with the 3D fight game where you fight, you know, each other. You saw that game, it's on my YouTube channel. So he basically followed that tutorial or simply downloaded the project and he put that game on Steam for $200. <laughs> and he named it Super Fight or something like that. So Steam is full of those games and there are a lot of templates on asset stores, on Unity, on Unreal Engine Marketplace where people can just download that template and literally just plug it into the engine and it's a playable game and people just use that and they publish that on Steam trying to, I don't know, probably earn some money or impress a girl or maybe impress, uh, I don't know, their grandmother. Whatever the case might be, you will see a lot of games on Steam that are like that. So you can put aside probably a couple of tens of percent of games on Steam. I'm, I don't want to say 50% of the games, but you can probably do like 40% of the games on Steam are like that, just garbage. So you cannot count them in. So he says that same thing over here. But then again, the majority of games on Steam are hobby projects and 20% of the games are free to begin with. So he, or 
in this post, he needs to apply some filters to our criteria, but we'll get back to that. So again, when you publish your game on Steam, and it's not like what the majority of people says, you need to compete with a lot of games. No, you're competing with a lot of flip asset games, a lot of copy paste games, a lot of tutorial based games and free games as well. So it's not all rains and darkness and whatnot, but let's go over here. Earnings potential of a full-time solo developer. So he is narrowing down the list by looking at self-published single player indie games that are fully released. So he is looking at the games that a single person like you and me, we can also put in here a, a small team. I don't know, a team of like three people or five people. We can count that as an indie team but when i say we can count it as an indie team i mean like you me you get a couple of your friends you team up together to create a game that's what i mean so they have to have at least five ratings in order to remove the really low end games on steam now i want to also say a few words about this if you plan to live off of game development live off of putting out games out there on the market and selling them your games they need to be good they need to be playable. I'm not saying they need to be Grand Theft Auto 5 level. I'm not saying they need to be Destiny level. I'm not saying they need to be Fortnite level, but they need to be a playable level because if your game is not playable to begin with, then you don't have anything to you know search for in game development. If you don't put the time and effort to create a game that's engaging, that's fun to play, that's addicting, that will make your players come back to play it again, then... That's the main thing that you need to think about in the beginning. So don't just start typing on the keyboard, throwing off code and you know, whatnot. Just first think about the mechanics of your game. What will make it playable? Why should I, as your player, play your game? Why should I buy it on Steam and play it? So this is what you need to take into account. So the price range also needs to be from $5 to $20. There is not much to talk about this. There are a lot of YouTubers who, you know, talked about pricing your game, but basically indie games are in the range from five, from $5 to $20, depending on how good your game is. And I say depending on how good your game is, that's one thing, but also depending on how engaged your audience is with you. And we'll come back to this later on because there are a lot of points that he didn't clear up here that he didn't even mention. So I'm going to add a few things with my comments as well. So I'm also... I'm also only looking at games released after 2018. So only games released in the past two years. He has narrowed the number of games down from 41,000 to 300 and 300. So when he takes all this into consideration, as he says, so applying these filters that we just read that you can also read later on, he narrowed that down from 41,000 to 3,300. So that's about the number in the, two, in the past two years of indie games that are released. So it's not like millions of games that a lot of people talk about and make you believe. So that's better. But we also removed the AAA games with hundreds of millions of dollars of sales. So that's normal. So we are not comparing ourselves to, you know, Ubisoft, EA Sports, and so on and so forth. So where does that leave us? As you can see here, he has a new graph. It goes from zero to 90, so to 100% of the games. But what's important here? The bottom quartile, I don't know how this is read, but anyways, the bottom line of those games, they make less than 5 K from the game. So less than 5K, these are the bottom ones. And I'm going to talk about this as well, don't worry about that. So the median is 13K per game. So that's like a median value. The top games, so the top ones, they earn about $44,000 per game. This is on a yearly basis. This is on a yearly basis. The top 15% earn more than $108,000 and the top 5% earn more than half a million or $555,000. As you can see over here, he adds a comment, only 15% of indie games make more than $100,000. Scanning through games in that scale, we find examples like Microton and Horizon Gate, games with beautiful but simple art and refined look. This looks like the kind of target an ambiguous solo dev could set. Now, this is what I also like that he mentions these games. So 
we will come back to this, but what I want to say is how you need to think about this. Again, this depends on where you live. So if you live in the United States, earning $30,000 per game, that's not much because there are taxes, there's also Steam's cut, and we will talk about this in a moment. But if this is your hobby, and if you can make it, so working on your day job, and you can manage to create a game in, I don't know, every two years, every one year, you can release a new game, and let's say that every game you release earns on average $10,000. If you have 10 games, that's $100,000 per year, which is a nice sum of money in the United States as well. If you live in a third world country, then you're probably going to live like a king. You can buy whatever you want with that kind of money. This is if your game is medium. Medium, that means, you know, the average game. But if you are a good game developer, if you learned, if you if you're creative, if you can create or find assets that are appealing good enough to create a game that's above average, you can even earn into the 50,000s, 100,000s, and so on and so forth. But as you can see here, what's important, what I want to talk about is this, what it means to be in the top 15%. Now, leaving aside that the solo developer has to be good enough at art, coding, marketing, and the business side, and I will talk about this, I will talk about this because he only mentions this briefly, and needs a bit of luck on their side, so luck doesn't cut it. So the days where you have Flappy Bird games and I don't know, pa pa whatever, pa piano tiles or whatever, you know, the games where people just publish them and they were like an instant hit, those days are over. You need to be smart about this. And you don't have to finish business calls and ha attend Harvard or whatnot to be that smart. I will talk about this in a moment. Let's have some faith and say we can get there. Let's also assume that the development time of such a game can be one year, which is on the faster end, but not unheard of. So let's say you need one year and a half, about two years to finish your game. You've achieved greatness. You've proven the doubters wrong and made it to the top solo dev food chain. You made it to the top 15% in, in, of indie games in terms of earning outstanding. Where's your 100K? Not so fast. Now, this is what I want to talk about because... What is left from those 100K that you earn? This 108K is the gross revenue, not including Steam's cut, discounts, chargebacks, returns, and so on and so forth. So let's see what you get after all of this. So let's say your game earns $100,000 in a year. Post discounts, so a typical game like this sells a fair amount of games at discounts of over 50%. So a typical game sells more, sells a, a lot of copies with over 50% discounts. So after applying those get discounts, you are not left with, with 108K, you are left with 86.4K. On average, a good rule of thumb is to apply a 20% discount to gross revenue. So about 20% of your sales will come from discount. Post returns and chargebacks, this will leave you at 77.8K because typically 10% of games are returned and chargebacks apply. So you can also count in 10% of your sales to be chargebacks. Chargebacks meaning people who are, I don't want to insult anyone, but I want to say dumb because you can simply ask for a refund. A chargeback is when you contact your bank and you say, hey, somebody stole money from my credit card. This transaction here was not authorized by me, even it, even it was, you authorized it because you clicked purchase on Steam. I didn't click it, you clicked it. When I say you, I don't mean you watching the video, but hypothetically. And then he calls a bank, he lies, and then the person who is selling something, he receives a chargeback. So that's a chargeback. So typically 10% of games are returned and chargebacks applied. Now net revenue after that is 77K. But after Steam's cut, which is 30%, so 30% of your sales go to Steam, you are left with 54.4K out of those 108K. So basically, you need to earn 100K to have 50K in revenue that will go to you. So if you earn $10,000, you will take home $5,000 after all of this. Of course, this is on average. It doesn't mean like that. You can earn 100K and you can take home like 60,000 or 65, maybe even $70,000. We don't know. But on average, let's say half of the money that half of the revenue that your game makes, you will take home. Now, over here, he says, is this the death of the dream? And this is what I want to talk about. Well, 
No, there are successful solo developers out there and there are many things a developer could do to improve their chances. I would argue that most of these, however, lie on the business and marketing side. A successful solo developer must realize that they are a solo entrepreneur and this is true. That means making the right pricing decisions, devoting a lot of time on marketing efforts and doing proper research into the game space and competitors before fully getting into the game development phase. Now. As you can see, he only talked about your potential revenue earnings and if you can live off of that. But what I also want to add is how you can make your chances even higher, how you can sell games at $20 even as an indie developer. And that's the high pricing for indie developers by making your own audience. And this is not the first time I've talked about this and this will not be the last time I've talked about it because this is really, really important. Your audience is everything you have. The people who buy from you are your resources. When I say resources, I mean they are the people who will push your game forward. If you don't have people who will buy for you, you can create the best game in the world. It will not go anywhere. So when you want to create a game, as I said, the first thing that you need to do, you need to start thinking about the gameplay mechanics to make your game beautiful and so on and so forth, playable as we already discussed a moment ago. But you also need to think about your audience, where they hang out so you can start posting there. Don't wait until you create your game and publish it online. Believe me, if you do this, if you create your game while you're building your audience, so that goes like this, that goes in line. It doesn't go create your game, then find audience. It goes in line like this. If you do it like that, you will increase your chances by 100 fold to get into the top 15% where you will earn 100, where your game will gross over $100,000 of revenue and even more. So in order to get $100,000, you need to sell how many copies? If your game sells at $20, 1,000 copy, that's $20,000. You need to sell 5,000 copies in order to get to 100K in a year. Now, imagine this. If you have a YouTube channel and let's say you grow it to 100K subscribers, and this is not hard, especially these days. You know, people think, oh, how can I grow? Gameplay videos, gameplay devlogs are really popular right now. So they're popular. So just put them out there. People will find you. Share them on Facebook groups. People will find you and they will come to your channel. So let's say you have a YouTube channel you post on a regular basis. That's one or two videos per week. And that's not hard to do. And when I say not hard, in the beginning, everything will be hard. When you start game development, it's hard. When you start creating videos, it's hard. But when you get a grasp how all of that works, you can, you know, it's very easy to do all of that. So anyways, my point is, and what I wanna say is, when you create your audience, while you're creating your game, and let's say, as I said, you have a YouTube channel, let's say you get 3 million views per year, and let's say out of those 3 million people, 1.5 million are unique people, and that's about right, because I get like, you know, half of, half of the views I get, or half, uh, the views that I get, divide that by two, minus minus or plus ten, a few ten thousands of people, that's how many unique people you have watching your channel. So let's say you get 3 million views, you have 1.5 million people on your channel. Out of those 1.5 million, you only need 5,000 people to buy your game. That's like 0.0, .0 I don't know how many percent. So you see how smart you also need to be when it comes to this. So that's your marketing side. Anyways, I'm going to leave you at this. You can think about it. I have other videos who talked about, who talk about this topic, how you can create your audience and so on and so forth. Then I will also leave a link to this post so you can, you know, like read it yourself. And this is just my two cents on this topic. And I will also put a few links down in the description if you want help or need help with learning game development, fixing bugs and so on and so forth. You can join my Game Development Academy for all of that. So make sure you check out those links. I don't know, other than that, fire here from us.com. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one.